If you're searching for the secret to make a million dollars in 2022, then I promise you, by the end of this video, you'll know how. According to one of the richest men of all time, John D. Rockefeller, who was worth up to $312 billion in today's money, once said, the way to make money is to buy when blood is running in the streets. Take a look at the world now. The war in Ukraine, unstable gas prices, and a virus that wiped out millions of people in the matter of two years. The blood is in the streets, but where do we put our money? Now let's flash back to the year 1863. America is divided. The North is fighting to save the Union, while the South is fighting to defend their way of life. Everyone who was anyone had some opinion about the bloodshed and direction the country was heading. Except for one person, Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller, the son of a snake oil salesman, was too busy consolidating funds and building his oil empire. Men were dying by the hundreds, and women and children were grieving their fathers and brothers. On the other hand, Rockefeller had just finished building the biggest oil refinery in the the world at the time. Located in Cleveland, Ohio, the refinery which led him to amass his great fortune. But not everyone has the money to build the next oil refinery or electric car factory, especially during times of economic turmoil. That is true, no doubt. But what did Rockefeller do that we can replicate on maybe a smaller scale? To answer this question, we're going to have to delve deeper into Rockefeller's upbringing and history. Before becoming the world's wealthiest man, John D. Rockefeller was born to a poor family family. Being the eldest out of seven, his dad, a traveling salesman, was not home often, which forced John to work at a young age to help support his mom and siblings. It wasn't until 1855, 18 years after his birth, where his family finally settled down in their permanent home in Ohio. For four years, he worked as a bookkeeper for 50 cents a day, but his aspirations made him search for more. While he was born into a poor family, Rockefeller learned the importance of get up and hustle from a young age. In 1859, Rockefeller had opened his first business, a business funded by a small loan from his father, where he shipped and sold hay, wheat, and meat to stores and suppliers. This leads us to Rockefeller's first lesson, take a risk and borrow money. Rockefeller once said, I would rather earn 1% off of 100 people's efforts than 100% off of my own efforts. This sentiment was clearly reflected in his borrowing habits. Rockefeller rarely used his own money, but instead borrowed money from family, friends, business partners, and banks to start new business ventures and projects, which ultimately increased his net worth by 200-fold. Similarly, Michael Burry, the man who predicted the housing crash and subsequent stock market crash in 2008, made his fortune with borrowed money. While the investors in his hedge fund were concerned with the risk of the investment, Burry was confident in his wager. The Standard Oil Company, the company that made him his fortune, was backed by multiple investors and banks. Rockefeller was willing to take risks, but not with his own money. Money. Once Rockefeller had amassed a decent fortune, he always made sure not to expose himself so much that a poor investment would be the end of his fortune. In today's day and age, there's so many different investing opportunities, such as stocks, real estate, NFTs, crypto, and much more. But with all of these opportunities, what separates the ones from long-term wealth and short-term loss? This leads us to Rockefeller's next lesson, invest in value. To back this up, Rockefeller stated, I had no ambition to make a fortune. Mere money making has never been my goal. I had the ambition to build. Rockefeller saw value in providing oil to America and other countries. He not only invested in the mere product, but the technology that allowed him to transport it all over the world. There was a time where everyone thought oil would dry out and go away, that it was only a short-term gain. Rockefeller saw something different. When he proposed to invest in railroads and better refinery equipment, his partners laughed. When he offered to fund the project 100% with his own money, then his partners came running back to him. They saw what he already built from nothing, and if Rockefeller was dedicated to the idea enough that he would stake his own money, something he rarely did as we know, then the banks and partners knew it was for the long term and it was going to be prosperous. This leads us to Rockefeller's third lesson, be dedicated to your ambition. Rockefeller once said, I do not think there is any other quality so essential to success of any kind as the quality of perseverance. It overcomes almost everything, even nature. While it might seem like Rockefeller had hit a 
gold mine with the oil industry, he did face many obstacles while amassing his great fortune. In 1890, Congress passed the Sherman Antitrust Act, whose main purpose was to dismantle monopolies. The act was a direct result of Rockefeller's business ventures. Prior to the bill's passing, Rockefeller and his associates borrowed enough money to buy out all of their competitors. This allowed him to have a monopoly on oil refinement. While some say it was unethical, I say it was a genius move by him. As mentioned, no one at the time had as much trust and hope in oil as Rockefeller. His ambition and perseverance inspired him to create an empire where he owned it all. Rockefeller had the confidence and conviction to place substantial gambles on the ideas that he thought would shape the future, and his perseverance to these large gambles was essential for him to acquire his fortune. Objectively, monopolies are harmful for consumers and the economy. So the passing of the Sherman Antitrust Act was a good thing for society. But from the perspective of Rockefeller, he saw this as a threat to his oil empire. Rockefeller searched for solutions, and finally, he discovered a loophole in the law. This led him to dissolve the Standard Oil Trust and transferred the properties to about 33 different companies throughout the states. He was able to retain ownership of his oil empire for another 20 years, until the Supreme Court declared his business decisions and empire illegal. This leads us to Rockefeller's fourth and final lesson, educate others. Rockefeller Rockefeller said, Never was I power thirsty or trying to control everyone. I believed in educating everyone so they could all get to the position I was at. Rockefeller's philanthropy actually began at a young age. Despite not being born into wealth, he made sure to give a portion of his earnings to charity, much of which was church related, which tied into his philosophy of educating everyone. Rockefeller kept this tradition throughout his life, and his contributions grew with his wealth. Later on, many of his contributions went towards education, science, science, and public health efforts, which made him the revered man he is known as today. It wasn't until 1911 that the Supreme Court declared that Rockefeller's Standard Oil Company was in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act, but at this time of Rockefeller's life, he was already in retirement, enjoying his later life and being a philanthropist. Success is tied into making a difference. If someone cannot make a difference to other lives or their own, was success even made at all? Rockefeller strived for change and recognized the fulfillment in doing so. Some of the habits Rockefeller used to build his wealth were keeping a ledger on all of his spending, using borrowed money to fully capitalize on his beliefs and accumulate an advantage, and persevering through troubled times by striving for things he thought more important than money. If you manage to follow these habits, success will probably be in your path as well.